Good morning, Quay. Give me a minute, one second. I'm just gonna resend this link. Good morning, Jess. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Um, I just resent my email so that more people get the link. Okay. I saw a few people looking at some other link. I don't know why. Hi, Shabria. Hey. Um, let me get my screen up. Hold on one minute. All right. Um, okay, so I just reset the class email, so I hope some more people will come through and get the correct link. Um, let me bring up our doc for today. Um, Okay. Hi, Heaven. Nice to see that you came in this one. I saw you join the other one. Hi, Sammy. Good morning. All right. So welcome to English 3. Yes, English 3, because now I teach different ones. Um, some of you I'm seeing for the first time. Um, some of you I saw last week. Welcome to the second week of term. Um, so today what we're gonna be doing is actually, we talked last week about love and how our whole project is gonna be about love and different forms of love. So this week we are focusing on familial love or family love. Um, and this could be with your blood family, this could be with a chosen family, um, it could be with any type of family that you choose. Today we're gonna to be reading a poem um, that has a mother and a daughter in it. So it's kind of like mother-daughter love. Um, so I figured that we would start off the class with this question. Um, if you could pass on one piece of advice from your family to maybe like your friend or to your future child, um, what would that piece of advice be? And you could answer in the chat, you could answer through voice, whatever works for you. Three. All right. Um, does anybody have a piece of advice that they would pass down? I'm still thinking of mine, to be honest. Shabrea said, always love each other no matter what. Love that. That's a good one. Um, mine is that like, my mom always says like, you shouldn't hold your feelings in cause I have a bad habit of doing that. And um, then it just kind of like explodes. So um, yeah, not holding your feelings in but learning how to kind of say them, which is so hard. Um, hardest thing ever. Does anybody else have any advice that they would pass down 
that they learn from their family. Two come to mind for me. Um, one thing my mom always said was to grow where you're planted. Um, one of my weaknesses is that when I'm like scared of something or I'm in a situation that I don't love, I have a tendency to wanna just like get out. Um, so one thing she always said to me was to grow where I'm planted, figure out a way to flourish among all of that anxiety. Um, so I passed that along. And then another thing she would say is to envision like your end goal, like what you want in life and to work backwards. So to always start with like, to always start with like where you're going and then to figure out the pieces in between, which has been helpful for me. Nice. Those are really good ones. I like grow where you're planted. It really takes a lot of work, I think. It's a tough one. Does anybody else have one? A piece of advice, or it could just be like a phrase or something that you like that maybe your mom or your dad says, or somebody, or your brother or sister, anybody like that. Nobody else? Heaven, you have one? Quay, Sammy, any of you guys? Hey, one away. What? We're answering this question. So if you could pe pass on one piece of advice from your fa that your family has told you, what would it be? Pass it on the who? Like a friend, somebody who, maybe like your future child, just what's one useful piece of advice you've heard from don't, them? Don't um, say the, everything, they, the first thing they come to you, like don't say it out loud. Oh, that's a good one. Think before you speak. Yeah. How many of you have a hard time with that? Me. Um, Shabria. I know some of you have a hard time with it. And at Yes Philly, we just kind of like learn to, we learn to deal with it. Um, Cause we know you guys and we know that anything you're gonna say is like, just like let it, the real thing is gonna come out. Um, but that's a huge lesson. Cause we're also like emotionally like, er, like reactive all the time. Um, and sometimes people like deserve, I don't know, they deserve to hear that <laughs> um, for what, if they say something that's disrespectful, of course. Um, all right, so these are pretty good pieces of advice. Um, the poem that we're gonna read today is called Mother. Um, and it's about the author, Nikki Giovanni, as a young, a young girl. Um, and she sees her mom, she sees her mom like one night in the kitchen just by herself, kind of looking out the window. Um, and she kind of realizes that her mom might be going through some stuff or she's a real person. Um, how many of you have had like a moment like that where you realize that your parents are like, they're not just your parent, but like they're a real person who that goes through things? Um, has anybody realized that? I feel like, well, maybe I say it in my chat. Sammy said he knew that. <laughs> well, Yes, of course you know that, but there, I feel like there are certain moments that you can like pinpoint where you can tell that like your mom is not just your mom or your dad is not just your dad. Like they're just going to do, they're going to make bad choices and they're going to make good choices. Um, and I think as we get older, we start knowing that, but maybe as an adult, as a child, like you don't always know that, or maybe you do, I don't know. Um, 
I felt like I always saw that in my parents when they were going through hardship or something. Like you can always kind of see them like thinking or feeling or something. Um, so then this, this author grows older and she tells her son like what her mom taught her basically. And the son tells it back to the mom. Um, all right. So we're going to go into checkpoint one and start doing, start reading this poem and talking about it just really quick before we do that. Um, everybody knows the schedule for this week, right? That we have Wednesday is mentor day, but we don't have any afternoon classes on Wednesday. So it's just like a half day. And then Thursday, Friday, we're off. So I won't see you on Thursday. Um, so you're going to have homework for next Monday. Does that make sense? Because we're like missing a day of this week. Um, cause Thursday's Thanksgiving, Friday's the day after Thanksgiving, just so you know that schedule. So we only have class once this week. All right. So if we could go, thank you guys for sharing all of your, all of your advice, pieces of advice. Um, if we could go into summit and let me just make sure go to English, go to year. Go to year on the side, English three. Project is called What is Love? And then, oh, somebody joined the class, so I have to assign them the project. So this week and next week, I guess, because it's a shortened week, we'll be focusing on family love. Um, the week after that, we will be focusing on romantic love. And then the week after that, we're going to focus on self-love. Um, so it'll be kind of like every week. And you'll look, if you look at checkpoint one, it says familial love or like a family love. And that's our first kind of theme. Um, so if you click this first checkpoint right here, just tell me when you're here in the chat. When your screen looks like this, type here in the chat. It should say mothers right at the top. And I'll wait till people get there. Is everyone here? Yes, no, maybe so. Give me an answer in the chat just so I know. And I know this period, the third period is always like people are have been through the whole day. So they're kind of like, oh, well, it's kind of like last period. But try your hardest to stick with it. And just let me know when you're on this checkpoint. Because you guys are going to have to give me answers to these questions as we're reading. Which checkpoint is that again? Um, checkpoint one. It says familial love. Um. Every time I keep clicking on them and stuff, like, it don't let me go into them. What do you mean? Like, I'm clicking it, the the one you told me to click, and it's not letting, like, me open it up. You're clicking this one? Mm-hmm. So what does it show? Can you, do you, are you on your phone or something? Uh-uh, I'm on my laptop. Can you share your screen with me to just show me what it shows? Mm, how I should you could click the dots next to your name and press share screen or you can go right down to the bottom and press new share wait I see it's a share right here it say you cannot start share screen while the other participant oh, is sharing. Wait, wait, let me stop mine and then share yours what would the put desktop or application 
desktop. Okay. Um, so it looks like the reason why is scroll down. You are some, can you make that thing bigger? That window? Yeah, like that. So click right on that. Don't go to the red. Just mm -hmm. scroll up to the box, the white box. Yep, this one right there. See where it says familiar love? Click that. There you go. So, Heaven, I'm actually going to ask you to keep that. Can you keep that up for a minute? On your oh, screen? my screen again? Yeah, because I want to show everybody what it looks like from a student side. Thank you so much. Um, so what I would like for you guys to do as we're reading the poem, um, can you scroll all the way down, Heaven? Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the dock. So you're going to see the poem, and then you'll see this ABC at the bottom. Um, I went to go put questions in the poem so that we could like answer them. And for some reason, they went down to the bottom. So like whenever you see A, this is the question for A. B is the question for B. C is the question for C. Um, can you scroll up, Heaven, to the poem? Great. So um, you see where it says A, like the little A after read separate books. So the question for A, we're going to talk about, I'll read it out loud. I'll scroll down. But Heaven, can you highlight separate books? Highlight it on your side. Yep. And then press comment at the top. And everybody should be watching this because this is what you're going to do. So Heaven, whatever whatever answers we come up with to like that question a you're going to type in the comment box mm -hmm. and press post after it's done so and that goes for everybody and this will be like like when we're in school when you write those pen annotations on the side this will be like your typed annotations on the side okay so having you can stop sharing with me you're fine thank you for, um for being the showing us an example. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to share back my screen. And part of the thing I miss about being in the building is just like printing these poems out and having you guys like just use your pen to annotate them um, where we could do them together. Um, all right. So basically, whenever we stop, whenever we um, Whenever we stop to discuss, you're going to be taking notes, excuse me, in the comment box that Heaven just did on her side. Okay. Um, so would anybody like to read the first stanza here? Because I know it would be nice to have a new voice. I'm fine reading it, but... I just feel like my voice is like on this <laughs> constantly. All right. Um, so I'll start. Mothers by Nikki Giovanni in 1970. Oh, wait, somebody put in the chat. All right, Miss Jess, do you want to? No, you could read it. I mean, I'm just, maybe we could alternate. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll read the first stanza. You read second. I'll read third. Perfect. Okay. The last time I was home to see my mother, we kissed, exchanged pleasantries and unpleasantries, pulled a warm, comforting silence around us and read separate books. We're going to read it once all the way through and then we'll go back for the questions. Okay. I remember the first time I consciously saw her. We were living in a three bedroom, or sorry, in a three room apartment on Burns Avenue. Mommy always sat in the dark. I don't know how I knew that she did that. I don't know how I knew that, but she did. That night I stumbled into the kitchen, maybe because I've always been a night person or perhaps because I had wet the bed. She was sitting on a chair. The room was bathed in moonlight, diffused through those thousands of panes landlords were, who rented to people with children were prone to put in the windows. 
She may have been smoking, but maybe not. Her hair was three quarters her height, which made me a strong believer in the Samson myth and very black. I'm sure I just hung there by the door. Do I you remember want to adjust, or sorry, I didn't make it clear. Do you want to alternate? Yeah, sure. I can do the next one. I remember thinking, what a beautiful lady. She was very deliberately waiting, perhaps for my father to come home from his night job, or maybe for a dream that had promised to come by. Come here, she said. I'll teach you a poem. I see the moon. The moon sees me. God bless the moon, and God bless me. I taught it to my son, who recited it for her, just to say, we must learn to bear the pleasures as we have borne the pains. All right. So we're going to go back through. You heard it once without interruption. Um, and look at these A, B, C questions. Um, so the first question for the first stanza, just in this first part, what is the, what is, um, the author and her mom's relationship like as adults when she went home to visit her mom? Just in this first paragraph. And you're putting this in, in your comments. What do you think it's like? Is it like a love or hate type of situation? Yeah, cause and where do you get that from in the in this little section? Um, as I said, pleasant truth and unpleasant truth. Perfect. So they have love hate type relationship, like, or it could just be that like they're exchanging the good things in life and the bad things in life. Like when you tell your family like all the stuff that's good happening, all the stuff that's bad. So we could do one of two. Either they have a love-hate relationship or they just tell each other everything. Like the good, the bad, the ugly. Now on your side, make sure you're typing these as your notes. And then I press post. Do you see that? And it'll like go like that. And I'll be able to see like what you have done on the side. And remember, this is part of your checkpoint grade that you're taking annotations. Awesome, thank you, Shabria. Um, so she, she has like a flashback, right? She's an old girl and then she says, I remember the first time I consciously saw her. And that's important because we were just talking about, oh, have you ever known your parents were people, right? Um, Sammy says they read separate books. That's a hint. I love that, Sammy. So maybe they are like separate in a way, like they don't have, they're close, but like maybe not that close. Or maybe they could just be comfortable in silence, right? You ever have those people you could just sit next to and like, do your own thing, but you still feel like you're happy, right? Or it's comfortable. Um, I like that hint. Thank you, Sammy. Um, all right. So she has the flashbacks of her seeing her mom sitting in the dark when she's like a young, young kid. Um, she stumbles into the kitchen and she says the room was bathed in moonlight. So what does that mean, bathed in moonlight? Have you ever had... Does anybody's room, is anybody lucky enough to have a room where they could see the moon through like, like the moon shines through your window? I used to have a room like that. Um, and it was really annoying because it was always, it was too light out actually. Um, does anybody else have a, have a bedroom where that happens? The moon shines through. Somebody in the last class says, said, that doesn't happen. That just happens in the movies. Like where you see people in like a, like with the moon shining through on their face, right? 
Um, but that's kind of giving us a hint. What type of scene does the child walk in on? The room was bathed in moonlight. Her mom had hair that was really, really long. Um, and her mom like reminded her of this Bible story, the Samson myth. Samson was a man that like, if you cut his hair, it, it like made him have less power. Um, so there is a scene, is this scene seeming like real or kind of fantasy like, like kind of a dream? What do we think? What's the feel we get for it? A dream. Yeah, it's kind of like dreamy, romantic, like the moon is shining. Her mom's long hair is like beautiful. She's like, oh, my mom's so beautiful, right? Um, she even says, I remember thinking, what a beautiful lady. Um, so the scene is very dreamy and fantasy-like. Has Does anybody remember that feeling like when you're young? and you like kind of look up to certain people, certain adults, and you just feel like nothing they do can ever be wrong. Like you don't, yeah, like you just think that like they're awesome and you don't know what they really go through. So this is kind of what she's walking in with. My mom's so beautiful. She has such long hair. She's bathed in moonlight, right? Um, she thinks her mom is beautiful as a young child. But there's a reason why her mom is kind of like in the kitchen in the dark. Um, she says she was waiting for my father to come home from his night job or maybe for a dream that had promised to come by. What does that line mean? How can the mom be waiting for a dream that had promised to come by? Do you think that the mom like achieved all her dreams? Yes, no, maybe so. She's waiting for a lot of things at that kitchen table at midnight. What do we think? And we don't have to be right about it. How many of you have, um, well, I guess we could talk about this in the context of teen moms or like people who become moms very, very young. Do you think that having a child changes your dreams? or like changes the path in your life? Or do you see people have kids and then they just like do what they were gonna do? I wonder if maybe having a kid requires parents to put the child before all of their hopes and dreams, not all of them, but maybe that having to take care of someone else um, leaves like less opportunity to do everything on, on your own list. Okay. That's a good point. Jess. like having to put a child first can make people do less stuff. It can, we're not saying it has to. And then Sammy says, um, sometimes I see that in women, you have to provide more. That's a really good point. Like women have to become the providers, right? And this sounds like it was a single mom maybe, or like with a dad who worked a lot to like get money for the family. Um, some people in my other class, in my other class, I have a lot of moms in that section, like people who have children. And something that they said was, it only, you can only achieve your dreams if you have support. 
by like, your mom's going to watch your kid. Their dad is going to watch them. Like you have to go to class or you have to go to work. So somebody kind of has to watch them. Um, and people were saying how, if they don't have that, it's like 10 times harder. Um, imagine if you were a single mom and then right now, if you were a single mom and you had to work to get all the income and you had to go to school. So I think that's good. Hi, Amir. We're on checkpoint one, Amir. You came in kind of in the middle. That's definitely like, if you don't have support, you have to provide like everything. Um, and it could be hard when you're young. So like, I'm gonna say depends on support you have. Because a lot of people have really good support in their family and they could still go to college, they could still go to school. Um, even people with no support, they find a way to get it done. Um, but if you have to like do all this stuff, it could get really, really hard. Um, Shabria, were you gonna say something? And I mean, I see it in Yes Philly with students who become moms sometimes, not, and then they like, their priorities change. Um, and you could have all the intention of the world and finishing high school and blah, blah, blah. But then once you're in it, like things could happen. And it's not everybody, some people, um, you just never know. So I get the feeling and maybe some other people get the feeling that this mom, um, this mom is sitting in the dark, just kind of like, oh crap, like, you know, thinking about all the things she could have done. But even though she has like this darkness, yes, yeah, Sammy, I'll, I slid up a little bit. Even though she's like kind of heavy thinking, blah, 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 looking out the window a little bit, she still says, hey, come here, like to the little daughter, like, I want to teach you this cute little poem, right? about the moon and about us and God. Um, how many people had like, when you were younger, your, your mom or your family member sang you a little lullaby or like they told you a little saying? Um, my mom always sang to me like before I, when she talk, she would like tuck me in at night and she always sang the same thing. Um, and you know, like she, she had her faults like outside of that, but I always kind of remember her doing that little like child thing. Right. Um, so she teaches her a poem. It says, I see the moon, the moon sees me, God bless the moon and God bless me. So we kind of have like a, a little prayer, a nighttime prayer. Um, and what does this little prayer mean? What is your, what do you think it means? Like, is she ever alone when she's sitting in that kitchen or who's looking at her or what is looking at her? I don't think she's alone because you say, I see the moon and the moon sees me. So maybe she's saying that the moon. Is yeah. Yeah. Like basically like even when you're up at night really, really late and you're like, everybody hates or like, I'm alone. Nobody likes me. Like if you ever get those feelings, the moon is still seeing you. God is still seeing you. Right. Like you're never truly alone. And I thank you, Shabria. So her mom is teaching her a little prayer and a reminder almost that we're never alone. The moon can always see you. God can always see you. You see God, you see the moon. So God and the moon are always with you. And like that gives a little bit of hope that you're never really alone if you look up at night, right? Um, and then 
here, I'll put this up a little. Does anybody need me to move up a little bit to get these comments? Maybe we'll finish the last thought and then you guys could put the comments um, and I'll scroll up for you. And then, so we flash forward now and the author saying, I taught this little prayer to my son who recited it for the mom, right? Like for his grandma, just to say, we must learn to bear the pleasures as we have borne the pains. So the question for this little last line, what, what do you think is the lesson from this poem? Just from this line, we must learn to bear the pleasures as we have borne the pains. And you could type it in the chat or say it with voice. Uh, I think it means to like understand, like people, when I just want to do some stuff like this. Can you say that one more time? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you were a little like muffled for some reason. And anybody else could chime in on the chat too. Hi, Zanalia. I didn't see you come in. Zanalia, we're on checkpoint one. What do we think is the message just from this line of the whole poem? I think Shabria was going to answer, but I think. Oh, I forgot. Well, my bad. Um, I was saying that basically that last sentence is saying, like, to understand that everybody's not perfect and that it would be, like, rough hair. Thank you. Everybody's not perfect. Love that. Some, like, everybody's not perfect. We can have, like, joy and pain in our life. And we have to deal with both of it. Like we have to learn how to deal with both. Anybody else have like another, another interpretation of that line? I think that's pretty, pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do is take the next two minutes. I'm going to make this kind of bigger. Um, and you guys can do the, if you didn't get the comments, like if you just came in, I'm going to zoom in. Um, I'll give you a second to copy some of the comments. And let me make that little, sorry. So the way you do it, just to remind you, is you highlight the part that you want to comment and then pr just press comment. And these are all things that were said by the class, by your, by your classmates. So I'll give you the next two minutes. If you want me to scroll down, I will. I wish there was a way, a way to see who's in here with out opening that. Can I scroll down? Do people have at least these two done? Okay, well, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom-ish. Hey, 
What happened? My fault. I was short. Miss Christine. Quay, we're um we're just putting these annotations on the side of the poem. So in checkpoint one, you have to highlight like wherever there's a letter. And then this is what we on the side is what we were saying about that line. We are putting these comments on checkpoint one. You got at the school, what you call it? Lab, I have lab, and also I'm gonna put this video on YouTube after class. Oh. I'm just gonna meet you oh. Um. All right. Does anybody need more time to get the comments? Okay, so I guess everybody has it. I can move on. I don't know. All right, well, we have, I wanna get at least to the multiple choice questions um, and give you some time. There are two of them. Um, and I wanna just give people like two to three minutes to answer them and you're gonna highlight the correct answer that you think. So it says, which of the following identifies a theme of the poem? You're gonna choose A, B, C, or D. Then press highlight at the top and choose the color you want for the, the right answer. How does the speaker's view of her mother change as she grows older? A, B, C, or D. You're gonna highlight the right one. Highlight. So take about three minutes to do that and then at 12.15 I'll check in and we'll see the answers. So you're highlighting what? What we doing? You're highlighting the answer to the right, whatever you think is the answer. So see, there's two questions. They're multiple choice. Oh, all right, all right. And then you're gonna highlight it and press highlight and choose the color. All right. And I'm not, I'm not highlighting the right answer. I don't know if don't D is not necessarily the right or wrong answer. So I'm giving you time to read them and highlight one. Okay, and that's all? Um, we're gonna go over them, see what the right answer is, and then I'm gonna announce your homework, which is actually gonna be these discussion questions. Okay. But for right now, you're doing this in class. And I'm gonna check in at, oh, you have one more minute left. What'd you say? Why? Yeah, you call me? No. Mm. I said you have one minute left to answer this question to figure out um, which letter you want to choose. All right, so almost 12.15. I'm gonna share our answers.
Can you score them? Mm-hmm. We're picking from one or two. You're answering both. So one and two, you're going to pick from A, B, C, or D. Which one is the right answer? And then you're going to highlight the right answer. Um, do Don't forget it yet. Just do it on your own, and then we're going to share. You hear me? No. I said, I can't do this in lab. I told you I just got up. So I don't even know what y'all read it, what the point was about. Um, You can look it over after class, yes. All right. All right, so let's share. It's now 1216. So number one, which of the following identifies a theme of the poem or the lesson maybe? Um, did you choose A, B, C, or D? Type it in the chat. A, B, C, or D, which one did you guys get? I don't see anything in the chat. Type your letter that you got. Sammy put A. Who else? Anybody else have a letter for theirs? Shabria put B. So we have A and B. Who wants to answer another letter so we could see what, give me one more. Anybody else put either A or B? All right, if we have no more. Anybody else? I don't think there's any wrong or right answers to these questions. Well, technically there some, most of them are like pretty good, pretty good answers. Um, but the actual, the actual answer, the, correct answer but I would say a could be correct um b could be correct but the actual answer is b um the most important lessons that children can learn come from their mothers um but I would also say that a could be you could argue for a um you could give evidence from the poem where a was shown also um all right, how about number two? How does the speaker's view of her mom change as she gets older? And in the last class, we defined the word mystical being like magical or fasc fascinated or awe. Um, how does it change? Who has a letter for that? And I think we're just in time. We have like one more minute. D. Shabrea said D. Who else has one for number two? All right, so actually number two is A. When she's a child, she views her mom very like magically. Remember we talked about like the, the moon, the Bible myth, um, but when she's an adult, she views her more realistically right? She's like, oh, I share everything. I share the good, the bad with you. We read separate books. We're comfortable together. Um, so the answer is A for that one. All right. So really quick, because we're running out of time. Thank you guys so much for participating. Um, we don't have class on Thursday because it's Thanksgiving. Please be safe. Wear a mask if you go anywhere um, and try to stay home as much as you can. Um, but this is due, discussion questions are due 
only one and two. So discussion questions one and two are due by next Monday. Okay, and I'll put that on announcements on your summit. Post announcements, English three, term two, 23 homework assignment. Answer one and two discussion questions. Checkpoint one. Okay. Um, and you could submit those whenever you're done and you should see that on your announcements. All right. So I will see you guys next Monday and have a great little time off and please be safe. Bye. I have a question. Yeah. What's up? So for those two questions that we're supposed to answer, we answer them um, by the poem that we, I mean, the story we just read. Yes. The poem. Yep. Okay. So you might have to read it again if you came in a little bit late. All right. All right. Okay. Have a good day, everybody.